and to submit to Minos and submit their children to the Minotaur. The stage is set. It's Theseus, heroic symbol of man at his best, against the Minotaur, the savage reflection of man at his worst. <laughs> Before Theseus departs for Crete, his father gives him an important order. When and if he returns to Athens, he must hoist the white sail instead of the black. That way, when the ship appears on the horizon, the king will know his son is safe. According to the myth, this is where Theseus was headed. Knossos, the capital city of King Minos and the Cretans. The ancient Greeks believed this was the home of the Minotaur, a scene of horrific crimes against humanity. Today, its ruins still hold clues about the reality behind the myth. At the height of Crete's power, between 1700 and 1450 BC, this city was home to 100,000 people. At its center was a vast palace with a complex layout. In fact, some experts believe it was the original inspiration for the labyrinth. It must have been extremely difficult for anyone to find their way all around that huge palace, which had something like a thousand rooms in it and five stories in some places. There were many passageways in it. There were no halls. The passageways went from one little room to another little room. So you could not find a direct line anywhere. My guess is that when the Greeks first saw this, they couldn't make sense of it. So that's where the notion of the labyrinth came from. They would have imagined it as a dungeony, dark series of corridors that violated the Greek sense of cemetery. Greeks like cemetery. Modern excavations inside the palace have only strengthened its connection to the Minotaur myth. Throughout the site, signs of bull worship can be found. One fresco found in the palace even depicts a young man battling a bull. It's a scene that seems torn almost directly from the myth. The depiction from the Knossos Palace shows a naked young man somersaulting over the top of a bull with large horns that seems to be enraged and chasing him. 